Everything was fine at the beginning, but you noticed something wasn't quite right with her. Sophie was eight when she had her first seizure. Her seizures last for hours. It's unrelenting. I didn't think it was a seizure. I thought she had choked. And I grabbed her and ran into the living room and called 911. And in that process, she lost everything. She was a new person after that. The, the vibrant, sassy Callie I knew was gone forever. Or so I thought. When you're running out of options, you can only do so many visits to the intensive care unit. It's time to start getting seconds and thirds and fourths and fifths opinions. Is there a possibility that she's a surgical candidate? About 600,000 children in North America with epilepsy. About a third of those have what's called drug-resistant epilepsy, and so we call that DRE. And that's where the development of neurotechnologies has played a role that can bring about a reduction in both the frequency and intensity of seizures. I was like, surgery, okay, but you know, what are the risks? Oh, we're gonna cut here and make a pocket and insert this device and then run wires up to her vagus nerve in your neck. And I was like, you're gonna do what? I just wanna make sure that she's gonna wake up. With the new technology, we felt it was the future. The neuroethical issues that go along with drug-resistant epilepsy are huge. Uncontrolled seizures change the brain. These technologies might change us as people. It's a giant jigsaw puzzle and we're trying to bring all the pieces to the table. Medicines are great, they do their thing, but if they're not working for you, then there has to be a different avenue. You have to always have hope, don't you? And you have to always keep looking that maybe they'll find a cure somehow. We are all in this together.